I, it, it wasn't really later in my life that I really started to actually realize it was Doug Tenapple, the guy who created Earthworm Jim, from, you know, sketches and then all the way into what we're doing right now, playing this game 20-some years later, you know? He's on Twitter. Um, I follow him. He follows me, which literally, I think I screamed when I saw that he followed me because I sent him a, a, like a public message on there or whatever, you know, asking about just something about a tattoo or something. Um, about Earthworm Jim. Damn, if he didn't follow me back, and that was more than what I could really ask for with what I was doing with it. So, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> he, he, he does do that. I have multiple Twitter accounts, and he does. He, he follows back, is what I'm saying. That's cool. Um, this game is full of little Easter eggs. Uh, you see that little anthill looking thing right there on the, on the, on the ground? Yeah. Well, if you don't see oh, good. Because when you step on it. Ouch. She's out of a little fire thing. I try to see if you begin to trap. The nicest thing about that $100 game I bought, or from Jim for the Sega CD, yeah. was, um, which by the way, I bought the Sega CD just for that. So that, that, that was it. was more than just like a little investment into it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to buy a Sega Genesis Sega CD combo pack. But it came with the original box, so I was happy with it. Um, yeah, I like, I like it. It's, it's nifty. I don't like how the CD compartment actually closes. Because it, it has this little turn thing on top of this, the door that opens for the CD compartment. Yeah. And that pushes the CD down into the tray. It doesn't click into the tray like oh, yeah. CD players do. Like maybe there's a pad thing, or maybe they were just really fucking lazy. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> but, it's, but it's, yeah, it's this Northrum gem that my favorite game. Forever and always. I, I can't wait for Earthworm Jim, the Earthworm Jim, Oddworld, <laughs> to come out. Um, they said it might be December this year. We'll see. Keep see. They keep putting up videos of it on Facebook, so we'll see. We'll definitely see. Um, do you like foreign games at all? Okay. Um. I really haven't, you know, because my generation, I never really got to experience much with them. Okay. You know, like, I've never played Super Mario and all that. But yeah. I really didn't get the chance, to, you know, going. I didn't really get the chance to play a lot because, uh, like, grew up in the NES, like Super Mario. Okay. And shortly after, like, it was boom, N64. Right, 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 right. right. You know, and because that being 3D, that's, you know, that was a big thing. Yeah. So. That was like the segue into, yeah, the three dimensional stuff. Yeah, for, so. Just, especially for the time. So, you know, 2D was done. <laughs> yeah. At the time. Yeah. I, I do know that, like, when a company releases multiple systems, or multiple generations of systems, they don't just abandon the previous generation. But, um, when. Super Nintendo came out in like 91 or something, or 90 or something like that. And I don't remember seeing a goddamn Nintendo game on the shelf after that, to be honest with you. I mean, that, I was real young when that stuff was happening. Yeah. I guess I really didn't pay attention too much. But, um, and then, you know, companies like plays like a mall, or whatever, were selling back in the, the 80s and 90s. They only wanted to push the most expensive stuff. That's how they made money. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna have to hope for the best. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that little me jumping around, like screen blacked out for a second. Um. Anyway, so you don't know what it's like to go to like a video game renting store and rent like a Super Nintendo or a regular ass NES game. Is that right? Uh, I used to Blockbuster for like 64 games. For like 64 games. Okay. Right. But. I didn't do a whole lot of that. Oh, yeah. But you, you, you used to be able to rent systems? Yes, actually. Um, you, you used to be able to rent systems from... I know Blockbuster did it. Because when I've seen the cases that they would hold for the systems for sale, they, they always have like a Blockbuster sticker on them. Huh. So, yeah. Uh, I've never done it myself. The first time I actually heard you could rent a system was uh, some members from a church I used to go to when I was younger told me they rented a PS2. So I was like, you can rent a PS2? I, I, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a, it used to be a really big thing, I guess. Um, I just, 
wasn't aware of it. I mean, I always bought what I wanted. Yeah. yeah <laughs> when yeah. I was younger, yeah. I was good like that, you know. Yeah. I don't want to say that word privilege. I wasn't good. I was damn good to be able to do that, you know. Like yeah. I said before, man, I bought my Nintendo 64. So, I didn't like to rent games. I just had, even when I was younger, I didn't like doing it. I had a problem. Not a problem. I had an issue. A preference not to rent games. If I knew I was going to buy the game, I wasn't going to rent it, of course, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it? Sonic 3 has a little unique story with me. What I did with Sonic 3 was I ended up renting it first, for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, maybe, uh, I just didn't want to buy it for me or whatever at the time. Yeah. But I rented it first. I went, actually, uh, I think I rented two games from two different game stores or something like that. Or I rented two games at, at once. It was Sonic 3 and Looney Tunes game. Duck Dodgers. The 21st and a half century. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I actually put... No, I know what it was. I'm sorry. I had bought... I had just got Sonic 3. My dad bought it for me. And... At the same time, I rented Duck Dodgers, the Looney Tune game for Sega. And what it was, I put the wrong game back in the case when we, when we returned it. Because I did it in the dark. Because for whatever reason, I don't know why I did it in the dark. But I, I, like, I didn't want to turn my light on for some reason in my bedroom or in my parents' room, wherever the system was at the time. And I, uh, I returned the wrong game. I returned my copy of Sonic 3 because I grabbed whatever game was in the Sega Genesis. I remember this fondly. That, like, questioning myself is like, uh, is this Sonic 3 in this system? In this system? Fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> so I returned Sonic 3. Now the game, uh, was lost after that. I guess, who, you know, um, from the video game rental store, I don't know if I said it was Blockbuster, but it wasn't. It, it was a place that uh, Rack and Sack from you know, across the street. You know what Rack and Sack is. I think we talked about that. Yeah, before. I know. I know. I know it's. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, from what used to be Rack and Sack, my next door neighbor had a. Uh, they had kids, and one was older than me. Well, actually, the two were older than me. Um, and he, the older of the two, actually worked at uh, the Rack and Sack video game rental place, or the, the movie slash video game rental place. So, he knew, I told him what happened, you know, because I was, I was devastated. I lost a $50 game. Man. I'm gonna die. I'm die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Nope, free fire. Nope. He had nine lives. He's a cat. I've him nine times. Yeah, I, I picked up on okay. what, was, what was going on. <laughs> yeah. I started seeing numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna be a free fire because, oh, I'm just, two hits left. I'm just gonna die. <laughs> free fire. It's intense, man. How epic the screen shakes and everything. Anyway, um, I returned the wrong game, and I didn't even see him come out. Damn. I returned the wrong game, and my neighbor. <laughs> I told my neighbor, and in the goodness of his heart, he actually bought me a new copy of Sonic 3. I was like flabbergasted. No one had ever done anything like that. Of course they haven't, right? And that was like the coolest thing ever. And I'm actually gonna have to contact him and hit him up and like officially say thank you. <laughs> for you didn't, you didn't tell him thank you? I mean, I'm sure I did. I was a kid. I was young. Whatever year Sonic 3 came out, I don't know if I when it came out. Whatever. Yeah. That time's out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there, there is no exact sequence of where he's gonna come from. Yeah. <laughs> RNG. <laughs> Someone's rolling that damn dice pretty hard, might I say. Why did I try to jump? <laughs> Why not? Uh, man. Twice. But yeah, I used to rent games every week. Games and uh, the movie Little Shop of Horrors every week because I can never find it on VHS. And then I found it one day, it came up with five dollars and it changed my life. <laughs> my grandma actually bought me that. That was, that was awesome. But um <laughs> I should just keep free firing. That's what I'm do. <laughs> um, what game were we talking about before for 64? You were asking me about what was it? For 64? 
Yeah, he used to some racing or skiing, jet skiing or something. Just like, it was like, or skiing, or snowboarding, uh, snowboard kids. Is that what you said? Snowboarding kids or something know. like that. 1080. I don't remember. I don't. Something I don't like know. that. I didn't buy those kinds of games for the 64. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't mind. What, what did you buy for the 64? Shit. Okay, I had uh, Mario 64, of course. What else did I have? Um, oh my god, what was it? It's been so long. Uh, Shadow of the Empire. That was my first 64. Map Torok. Uh, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Uh, shit like that. South Park game. That was oh. the only one I knew that had a South Park game. That game had a little history with it. You know, on top of uh, it being restricted, <laughs> rated M yeah. and everything. Uh, it was going to come out... Okay, my dates might be off, but uh, whatever. It was going to come out like December 18th or 19th of that year. Okay? Yeah. But instead, they pushed it back like a week. So it came out December 23rd or 24th. Now this game was literally impossible to find. You could not find this game anywhere. Um, yeah. Because they pulled it from the store shelves. Like, not only was it delayed right before Christmas, but they pulled it from store shelves because of the content. And what? somehow, I got a copy for that Christmas. I don't know how it happened, but damn. I got a copy of it, and I loved it. And it, it's still, I still think about it all the time. I still remember the Master Chief for it. it was, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> you put in the word uh, Bobby Bird and the little password thing, and you unlock all characters, and level select, and invincible. You know, God mode, all that good shit. Yeah. yeah. Infinite ammo. Uh, the terrorists are full of dolls. Uh, were like the best weapons in the game. They're like these little fart dolls that when you threw them, they made a fart cloud and they killed enemies. Wow. The best part about that game, honestly, was the multiplayer. I enjoyed South Park 64 for the multiplayer more than I enjoyed Goldeneye. Wow. I played that game that damn much. You know, like I said, I always had like uh, a lot of systems to choose from to play when I was younger, and I had a PS1 at the same time. And another South Park game I had was called Chef's Love Shack. I didn't know what it was. I got it for Christmas of 99. <laughs> so what it was, it was like a little trivia game. Yay, continue, because I am going to need it.